The AeroScan is the only truly handheld OAE system on the market today. Capable of performing a complete OAE test in as little as six seconds and instantly providing test results on screen and on paper via the included printer. Completely portable and battery operated, this system can be used in almost any environment to test everyone from infants to adults. The AeroScan is simple to use yet highly flexible. Housed completely within the handheld unit, the AeroScan is capable of performing either distortion product autoacoustic emissions, transient evoked autoacoustic emissions, or both in the same instrument and then storing up to 50 tests. For ease of use in testing all populations, the AeroScan comes with an internal and an external probe. Also, the tips of these probes are designed to be totally maintenance-free. In enhanced AeroScan models, users can customize their own test protocols and perform both screening and diagnostic OAE testing. The AeroScan system is shipped with the following items. The AeroScan unit, cradle, external probe, probe tips, ear tips in 12 sizes, printer, printer cable, thermal printer paper, power supply, batteries, and manual. Your system may also include one or more of the following. A carrying case, a rechargeable battery, and operator headphones. Also available is the AeroScan database software. This software allows the user to archive, display, graph, and print test results for each patient. To get you up and running quickly, let's cover the Quick Start system setup. When the system first arrives, a minimum amount of setup is needed to make the AeroScan operational. We can complete this in four easy steps. Step 1. Install the batteries into the AeroScan. Step 2. Connect the power supply to a wall outlet and the printer. Step 3. Load the thermal paper roll into the printer. And Step 4. Connect the printer to the cradle. The setup is now complete. A detailed setup section will be covered at the end of this video. Now let's cover the AeroScan operation section. In this section, we will introduce you to test procedures applicable to all patient populations. First, let's go over the basic controls. The AeroScan instrument uses four buttons to control all functions of the instrument. The arrow keys correspond to the arrows on the display. To turn on the AeroScan, press and hold the down arrow button until the display turns on. The operating mode, TEOAEs or DPOAEs, will briefly appear followed by the main menu screen. The green ready light at the top of the unit will also be illuminated indicating the unit is ready to test. To conserve power the AeroScan automatically shuts down after two minutes of inactivity. Please note that the AeroScan system can be used on all test populations with either the internal or external probe. However, to give you some guidelines, the internal probe is generally used for children and adults, while the external probe is used for newborns and special needs populations. Please remember that these are only guidelines, and you should feel free to use what works best for you. For this demonstration, we'll be using the external probe on a newborn. To use the external probe, turn the AeroScan off and remove the protective cover from the top of the unit. Next, plug the external probe connector into the external port. Take care to align the connector with the flat side facing the display. When turning on the AeroScan, the yellow test light will illuminate briefly to indicate AeroScan has detected the presence of the external probe. If the yellow light does not illuminate, remove and then reconnect the probe. When screening an infant with the external probe, the red flanged ear tip is usually the best choice. This is because the tip makes a better seal in the ear canal when your hand is not there to assist. To begin testing a newborn, select an ear tip. Place the ear tip as far down as possible on the probe tip. 
If there is any space between the probe tip and the ear tip, the test will not run correctly. To properly place the ear tip in the newborn's ear, first pull down and back on the pinna. This will straighten the ear canal and make probe placement more effective. Now, gently place the probe in the newborn's ear, making sure the probe is at the proper angle. As a general rule, the probe should be angled toward the infant's nose. The infant may startle and move while putting the probe in the ear. This is normal behavior. After waiting a few seconds for the infant to calm down, run the test. This is done by selecting either the right or left arrow key corresponding to the test ear. The yellow test light will illuminate and the horizontal volume and noise bars appear. The volume bar indicates ear canal volume and the noise bar indicates environmental noise. These bars will assist the tester to achieve proper probe placement. Each bar begins at full screen and should decrease to half screen or below before the test begins. The arrow scan will automatically start once an appropriate seal is obtained and a calibration will be performed. Following the calibration, a set of bars will appear on the screen. These bars are the test results that are displayed as the emissions are measured. The red error light will illuminate when noise is being discarded from the test sample. Testing is complete when the green ready light is illuminated. The result screen will appear automatically once the test is complete. This screen indicates the test ear and gives the results of the test. If either bar does not move to the left of the screen, then a problem exists. If the volume bar will not move to the left, then a proper seal has not been obtained. To fix this problem, try repositioning the probe or selecting a different ear tip. If no volume bar is shown, the probe may be resting against the ear canal or a piece of debris such as cerumen or vernix is present. To fix this problem, try repositioning the probe, replacing the ear tip, or checking for debris in the probe. If the noise bar will not move to the left, there is either too much noise in the testing environment, the subject being tested is too noisy, or a proper seal has not been obtained. Check for excessive noise and then start again. Please note that while a quiet testing environment is desirable, the AeroScan's artifact rejection allows for accurate test results in up to 70 dB SPL of noise. Once the testing sequence is completed, the results will appear on the AeroScan's display. A pass result on the screen indicates the patient passed the screening. This passing result indicates normal outer hair cell function in the inner ear, which is highly correlated with normal hearing. A referrer indicates the patient did not pass the screening process. Because probe placement is key to successful testing, you should reposition the probe and rerun the test. If a refer result continues, the patient should be rescreened later or referred for further testing. This result does not indicate a hearing loss until follow-up testing by an audiologist is completed. You may want to refer to the AeroScan user manual for a complete explanation of the pass refer criteria. Noisy indicates that excessive noise was present during the test, while no seal indicates that a seal was not maintained throughout the test. To review the test results, press the down arrow key and the result screen will appear. The bars represent the signal-to-noise ratio of the emission at each frequency tested. Testing with the internal probe is similar to that of the external probe. Testing of children and adults uses the same basic principles. Select an ear tip appropriate for the patient. Keep in mind that the deeper the seal, the larger the emission. Therefore, selection of a smaller ear tip is generally preferable. Please note when using either the internal or external probe, Make sure that the ear tip is fully seated on the probe. The arrow scan can be easily used to test children with PE or pressure equalization tubes. First, insert the probe into the ear canal and obtain a proper seal. Next, disable the auto start by pressing and holding the appropriate arrow key until the green test light turns off. The arrow scan will now calibrate and test the PE ear. Standard pass-refer results will be displayed, 
and you should proceed accordingly. Next, let's cover how to print the test results. To do this, simply press the teal colored on button located on the front of the printer and then place the arrow scan in its cradle. The test results will print automatically. You may want to refer to the AeroScan user manual for a complete explanation of the printout. Now let's cover procedures for cleaning and maintenance of the AeroScan. This instrument requires no regular maintenance beyond routine cleaning and replacement of the four batteries in the handle of the AeroScan unit. Please note that while it is not required, it is recommended that a factory authorized distributor perform an annual validation of the AeroScan. If the AeroScan system needs cleaning, it may be wiped down with a damp cloth and a mild antiseptic solution such as cetylside. The probe tip requires replacement only when it becomes clogged. These tips are disposable and no attempt should be made to clean them. To replace the tip, squeeze the tabs and pull the old tip off. Discard the tip. Place a new tip on the probe and push down on one tab at a time until it clicks into place. Be sure to tug lightly on the probe tip to verify that the tip is securely attached. To replace the tip on the external probe, release the tabs on either side of the probe and slide the tip out. Discard the tip. Align a replacement tip using the notch on the tip. Once the tip is pushed all the way on the probe, press lightly on the tabs to snap them into place. If seated properly, the tip will be flush with the body of the probe. Now we will cover the four easy steps of the AeroScan system setup in more detail. In step one, let's install the batteries. To do this, open the battery compartment on the AeroScan by sliding the battery cover down. Then install the four batteries as shown on the diagram in the battery compartment. Once the batteries are securely in place, close the cover. In step two, we'll connect the power supply to the printer. First, connect the power cord between the wall outlet and the supply. Then, connect the supply to the printer. In step three, we will load the thermal paper roll into the printer. First, open the cover on the printer by lifting up and back. Then, place the paper roll next to the printer so that it feeds from the bottom of the roll towards you. Next, move the paper holder lever to the right and place the paper into the printer. Release the lever and make sure the roll turns freely. Now, move the green paper roll release lever towards you until it snaps into the open position. Feed the paper under the black roller until you have approximately three inches of paper extending above the black roller. Move the green lever back to its original closed position. Then, push the teal colored button to power up the printer. The indicator light will flash green if the paper was properly installed. Pushing it again will advance the paper. Feed the paper through the slot in the cover. Close the cover. Pressing the same button twice rapidly will print a test run. Finally, in step four, we'll connect the printer to the cradle. Turn the cradle over and connect the printer cable to the nine pin port. This connector will fit in only one direction. Once it is firmly seated, turn the two screws to secure the connection. Next, turn the printer over and connect the plug to the port on the right side of the printer. The flat side of the cable with the arrows should face up. The setup process is now complete. For more information, please consult your AeroScan user manual or contact your authorized dealer.